show of hands, who was scared to use the mixture knob? Welcome to the Safer Pilot Challenge. What's happening, M Zero Nation? Jason Schapper here, day 14 of the 31 Day Safer Pilot Challenge. Put it in the comments. Who is 14 out of 14? You're like, like 47% of the way there. Congratulations on that. Hey, I open this up by asking a serious question um, because I know I had this problem. Who was terrified to touch the mixture knob in flight? I, I was that pilot. I was, wow. This mixture knob, this red lever here, well, this like turns the engine off. So I was literally terrified to use it. Well, today I want to educate you on when to use the mixture in cruise flight and scenarios where you'd actually use it for takeoff as well. And then we're going to talk about lean of peak and rich of peak operations. So for starters, welcome to 6,500 feet. Now, this is a tough example to give because, uh, as you know, it's winter time right now. And yes, even down in Naples, we have, uh, actually south of Marco Island right now, we have winter. It is a frigid, what's the OAT um, up here? It is a frigid 59 degrees Fahrenheit, 15 degrees Celsius. It's a beautiful standard day up here at 6,500 feet. I almost have a jacket on. It's that cold. Some of you are thinking, Jason, it's January 14th today. It's, it's chilly. It is chilly wherever you're at. So. We are going to, right now, I am locked in at 2,300 RPMs. You can see I'm burning fuel uh, about seven and a half gallons per hour. You can see I have my uh, CHTs and my EGTs down below. And you can see I've got my EI, that's our Electronics International, CGR uh, 30P here, set up for a rich of peak operation. Now. You can also see, maybe this overhead camera will catch it, I'm at full rich mixture right now. A good rule of thumb is above 5,000 feet, I lean out the mixture. Why is that the case? Well, you've heard people say when they go skiing out west that the air is thinner. Why do uh, endurance athletes go to Boulder, Colorado to train? Because the air is thinner, right? Well, it's, it's less dense is what we would call it. Now, we deal with something called density altitude. And oddly enough, the higher we go, the less dense the air, but the greater the density altitude. Our mixture controls our fuel to air mixture. I'm giving it all the fuel she'll take right now, but the air isn't there because it's not physically outside. So realistically, what's happening is I am burning more fuel than I need. I am risking fouling my plugs right now because it, it, it just it's not there to burn. It's taking more fuel than it actually needs because the air isn't there. So realistically, when I lean it out, I will not only burn less fuel, I should see the tiniest, tiniest little increase in my RPM as well. So let's go ahead and let's do that scenario here together. I'm gonna slowly lean out. And listen, some of y'all make me nervous how aggressive you are with, with bringing the mixture back. I baby it out a little bit here. And let's just slowly twist it and let's watch our RPM I want your eyes focused on RPM and focused on fuel flow and watch my EGTs as well. And I'm going to move slowly. This is not a race because all you're going to do is call the engine, cause the engine to sputter here if you take it out too much. Now, you can see fuel flow starting to go down. I'm probably on a standard day not going to get a huge increase in RPM. In fact, if you're using steam gauges, you're, it's, you're not going to even notice it. I'm going to increase like 10 RPMs here, but I'm going to keep bringing out. I'm going to get to about just shy of a rich of peak. Look, my fuel flow is pushing into the sixes now. I'm listening as well to my engine. I don't want to hear it sputter or anything like that. That's going to tell me I'm way too lean. I'll bring it back in from there. Do you see I just got an increase in my RPM? Let's watch. My rich of peak is dropping into, see where it says, like, right? I'm in the minus teens now, 19, 18. I'm just about rich of peak. I'm gonna leave it right about there. Ooh, it's kissing, kissing five gallons per hour there for a second there. And I gained about 10 RPMs. That is a rich of peak airplane. And I have optimized this airplane now for performance. Make a turn here before I get too far out over the water here as we keep talking. 
Uh, I've optimized for rich of peak operations. Now, I could take this all the way to Lena Peak and be burning five gallons per hour and really, really get down there. I could. And there's pros and cons to each. However, being an aircraft owner for a long, long time and taking engines to TBO and beyond TBO, I've done that on rich of peak operations. When I was teaching students on their solo across countries, I would teach rich of peak operations. It's safer. It's better for the airplane. Rather, to run lean of peak, you've got to really have the instrumentation and really know what you're doing. So I always advocate a rich of peak operation. Now you're saying, Jason, what if I don't have all this fancy gadgetry that you have over there? How would I know a rich of peak operation? Even if you don't have something like an EGT, you can lean this out actually until you get a decrease in RPM. You're literally starving the engine too much. And I'll show you what that looks like and what it'll list like. You'll literally hear the engine decrease. You're not going to kill it. Don't worry. I'm going to go a little bit more. The Richard Peak's not too far from Lena Peak. There's my decrease in RPM and I'll go in. Again, nothing scientific about this. There's snow in the airplane. About one, two, three, four full turns. Let's see. And that puts me a little bit on the rich side of rich of peak. Maybe three turns could have done it there, but that's a safe bet. And you've got to know your airplane and work with your instructor on this. How does this apply in a takeoff scenario? Well, I've been in this very airplane to Sedona, Arizona. And if you do that in the summertime, I've been to Leadville, Colorado. If you don't lean for takeoff, meaning I'll go a full power run up and begin holding the brakes and lean it out until I get an increase in RPM, you'll gain, in that situation, 50 to 60 to 70 RPMs. You have to, in some cases, even lean for takeoff when dealing with high density altitudes. Listen, the mixture knob is not something to be scared of. We build up this idea that, oh, when I pull it back, that kills the engine. That's how we kill the engine. And you're right, that does start the engine. But it's also, in crews like this, and in some instances for takeoff as well, it's the right thing to do to optimize performance of your aircraft. If you're doing your cross countries, flying around at full rich, you're burning way too much gas, and you're going to be spending a lot of money because you're going to be fouling spark plugs with all that lead deposits that build up on it. Learn how to lean the mixture. If you're not comfortable with it, go grab a flight instructor to fly with you and learn how to do that as well. Hey, this is something we also teach inside of our online ground school. I encourage you to go take a trial of it at m0atrial.com. Like and subscribe on Facebook and YouTube. Can't wait to read your comments below this video. Have a blessed, abundant, outstanding rest of your day. And most importantly, remember, good pilot is always learning. I will see you all tomorrow. See ya. The Private Pilot Blueprint is everything I wish someone would have told me before I started my flight training. How to save time and money through the entire process, how to find a great flight instructor, how to really just maximize everything in your aviation journey. It's the definitive roadmap to beginning that aviation journey. You can grab your copy by going to privatepilotblueprint.com.